Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just give me one second to open up our study. Um, prior causes of afflictions based on the gospel according to spiritism, chapter 5, is our study for this morning. And uh, before I begin, I would like to take this opportunity to pay homage to a very sweet soul that discarnated today, Sheila Passos um, from Brazil. She came to the United States to assist us in the work of the Children and Youth Spiritist Education. And um, an invaluable being that was sweet and battled, the good battle, if we can say this, against cancer, and she won. Reminded me of Jesus when he stated in John chapter 30, chapter 16, um, verse 33, in which he said, there will be tri tribulations in the world, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Giving us the idea that in a world such as the one that we live in, although we have good moments and we have amazing opportunities to seek the happiness, whether it's in a relationship or it's a financial, whatever it may be, it's inevitable that we will encounter some afflictions. It's inevitable. So it's not by chance that the benevolent spirits would bring us on chapter five on the gospel according to spiritism, the topic, blessed are the afflicted, blessed are the afflicted, which is part of the Beatitudes. And Kardec and also the spirits bring us instructions on items that if we didn't have spiritism, it would be quite hard to understand. And one of them is on the item of prior causes of afflictions and present causes of affliction. And so on the prior causes of it, which is items six through 10, which is our study that is based on, we are given a view of this explanations as to why we encounter such, such certain things that there is no reason for. I was speaking to someone who had said that she had lung cancer and um, my father had lung cancer, but he smoked. So he could state that it was the present causes of affliction. He smoked for 41, 41 years. 30 years later, he had lung cancer, stage four, which manifests to his body, and he discarnated in five months, which was a blessing, truly, if we know how painful it is. But I asked her, I said, did you smoke? And she said, no, I never smoked. I never did anything. And so I looked at her, and of course, in that case, we would find prior causes of afflictions, which in this present life emerges. It emerges at a certain time when we are able to endure whatever it is that may come our way. We would like to start with a story about this young lady called Adelaide Marguerite Goss. It was a spirit who was evoked and it's on the part two of the book, Heaven and Hell, where we have the suffering spirits. And her story is quite amazing because she was poor, she was a humble maid, and uh, she lived in Normandy. And at the 11 years of age, she went to work for a very wealthy family in the area. And she worked really hard. I mean, there was <coughs> one of the um, type of machinery, if you will, that we have today. So we can imagine the type of labor that she had. And later, some years later, the Seine River, did I say that right, Marcelo? Seine, Seine, French word. And there is, it, it flooded. And it not only flooded, it actually affected the area in which she lived. And that wealthy family ended up losing everything because the crops, the plantations suffered the situation that they found themselves in. And stifling any type of selfish, selfishness within her, she felt compassion for the family who had lost everything. But she had 500 francs that she accumulated over the years. And with that, 
she decided to give the family that money. And she continued working for them for free, for free, for about 50 years. Even when they died and they left a daughter who was a widow and was left penniless because her husband also didn't leave her with anything. So she lived like that and then she, when she later died, the community decided to pay homage to her. And, um, and before that, because of her self-denial that she became known for in that small town, the community also decided to help her materially, financially, to give her some type of comfort in her old age before she died. And though at the attack of a palsy, she died suddenly and painlessly. And in the evocation that we are going to see, there was some significant lesson that we can extract to understand a little bit about the prior causes of affliction before we dive into the gospel according to spiritism. And so Kardec said in the Parisian Society, December 27th of 1861, to the spirit who was actually speaking through a medium. For those that are new to mediumship, it's important that we say this in the aspect of the channeling. And so Kardec asked the spirit, we consider ourselves fortunate to be able to express our admiration for your conduct during your earthly existence. And we hope that your self-denial has earned you your reward. And she says, yes, God has been good and merciful towards this servant. Everything I did and which seems praiseworthy to you was actually quite natural. She's talking about the nature of the spirit itself, that upon arriving in the spirit realm realizes that all that she did was quite natural to her. There was no hardship in the way that we would assume that she would have felt. And then Kardec says, for our instruction, could you, could you tell us the cause behind your humble condition while on the earth? And so she says, for two successive existences, previous lives, I occupied high level positions. It was easy for me to practice the good without sacrifice because I was rich. But it was making me evolve too slowly. And so I asked to return in a humble condition in which I would have to struggle with financial hardship. And so I prepared myself for a long time and God upheld my courage and I was able to reach the intended goal. Quite interesting because she's talking about two lives that she had. She was still good, but because she was rich, it was quite easy to do any type of charity, to be any kind of, to, to have any type of benevolence towards others. And so in the spirit plane, she says, I like to come back, but I like to have a little bit of a test, harder one, if you wish. As if we are kind of like in high school and then we graduate, we go into the university, right? The courses are going to be a little bit harder, but high school prepared it for, for that moment. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. So Kardec says, have you seen your former employers? Please tell us what your position is in relation to them and if you consider yourself as their subordinate. She says, yep, I have seen them. They were present when I arrived here. I must humbly confess that they consider me superior to themselves. Did you have any particular reason for being so fond of them rather than someone else? Meaning, was that by chance? So she says, no obligatory reason. I could have achieved my purpose somewhere else. However, I chose them in order to pay off a debt of gratitude. I felt I owed them because in the former life they had been kind toward me and hindered me service. And so Kardec says, what do you think your future holds? She says, I hope to reincarnate on a world where a thing is unknown. This is our wish. This is our desire to look at our world and see that there is no longer any type of pain. While we are here in the United States, in Florida, and although it's scorching hot, and we can joke that Florida is the closest planet to the sun, right, because mm -hmm. it's so hot, we look at other countries. We look at Africa, for example. Susanna is going to Africa in about a week, 
join in the fraternity without borders. Charity has no borders, but it's another place. And oftentimes, we consider that it's a world apart, but it's not, it's here, it's, it's in our planet. And there is a lot of pain still that we see. And often people will find themselves, especially when they fall into the trap of being pessimistic and look in the world and say, why live? It's not worth it. Everywhere there's pain, I'm in pain. I'm a good person yet nothing good comes my way. I keep struggling. It is a wave after wave after wave. And then when the waves stop and I am able to float and breathe, there is a storm that comes again and the waves emerge yet again. And so it is not by chance that the promise consoler that we have in Spiritism would not bring us a chapter such as the one that we have, which is chapter 5, as we mentioned, prior causes of affliction. If there are misfortunes in this life of which humans are the primary cause, there are others which at least in appearance are completely foreign to them and which seem to touch them fatalistically. fatalistically. And this is what we're talking about here. There are the examples that they bring, the loss of loved one, especially when it's a family breadwinner and they find themselves without knowing what to do. The accidents that no foresight could have presented, prevented. The reverses of fortunes that frustrates all measure of prudence. Natural disasters, congenital infirmities, especially those that take away the unfortunate victims. The death of children, which is something that often, I mean, one of the most painful things a parent could actually go through. If it is hard for us to think about our loved one discarnating and the pain that we would feel because we would miss them so much, I can't imagine what it would be like for a parent to lose a child. I remember uh, Raul Teixeira, he is an amazing uh, speaker, medium, and author in Brazil. And um, he was coming to the United States to, to do some work for us. This guy, a, a scholar, I mean, the way he spoke was, I, I had white envy or Christian envy of the guy because he was so smart, so eloquent. He is so smart, eloquent. And his lectures were the type of lectures that would leave anybody speechless, anybody, especially those that would question things like this. I remember one time I was watching him talking about the premature deaths and he said, when a child dies, that spirit reincarnated simply to cover up a hole that was left behind in the previous incarnation. So the spirit reincarnates, makes amends for that hole that was created, and leaves. Because it had accomplished, it had completed its task, its mission. But anyway, he's traveling to the United States. He arrives in Connecticut. And lo and behold, he's in the plane. He's sitting on the window. And everybody's leaving, getting off the plane. But he's laying there, and he looked like he was asleep. And when the flight attendant gets near, she realizes that something very serious had happened. So they rush him to the hospital, he gets there, and they realize that he had had a major stroke. Nobody had noticed, because it was in the middle of the night, the flight, so it looked like he was asleep. But he's able to narrate exactly what happened because he is a medium. At the moment when he was about to have the stroke, he sees his mother, and she's serious. She's not smiling, she's not saying anything. And he sees Camillo, the spirit day this way, his mentor, his guide in this life, also very serious. And at that moment, he feels that pain in his head. And he's told to try to stay awake as much as possible until eventually he's unable to stay awake and he falls deep into that sleep. When he gets to the hospital, we realize how severe it was because his right side of the body was affected and so was his speech. And up to this day, people question, how is it that God allowed such a speaker to suffer such a stroke where he is unable to continue the work that guided, that consoled, that enlightened so many people. And young, he's young. 
beautiful black man with green eyes. I don't know if you guys know him. Don't be jealous, Marcel. You know, I mean that infraternally. <laughs> we still ask. And then we come to the conclusion that he is giving the greatest lecture of his life silently and in action. Because one of the things that he has not lost is faith in God. Understanding spiritism, understanding its content, understanding that there is a rational faith behind all that happens, he still doesn't know the reason. They won't tell him. Whenever he asks Camilla, why did this happen to me? Because it's hard. Can we imagine that? I mean, his face was able to look kind of normal. He's able to speak. But his, his brain is able to think of the word, but the machinery doesn't correspond. It, he's unable to say the things that he wants to say sometimes. And he gets quite frustrated because as he's trying to speak, we, because we are impatient, and his struggle actually makes us feel uncomfortable, we keep trying to figure out what he's trying to say and throwing words at him. And that frustrates him even more. And so we've learned that when he's with us and he's speaking, we just let him try to do that because it's actually an exercise. But he asked, he asked Camilo, he said, why did this happen to me? And Camilo's answer is pretty much the following. He says, do you trust in God? I do. Well, there is your answer. Just let it go. Eventually, you will know. So even somebody like him, who suffers such an inevitable type of situation that resurfaces at the right time in his existence and invites him to become the greatest spiritist speaker in action. Because actions actually say a lot more than words. And while you may be listening to me, perhaps hopefully <laughs> enjoying what I am bringing, I can't tell you that at the times of struggles, at the time of situations that arises, I'm able to face it in the exemplary way Vero Teixeira has had. I suffered um, a herniated disc about four years ago, five years ago, and um, it was quite hard for me, it still is, because I had a surgery, I had several type of injections, I had to put in a nerve type of uh, thing on my back that sends you know, frequency to my brain and I still have pain. And sometimes I get frustrated. I get sad. But then I am reminded that things could be a lot worse. And that is the key of understanding spiritism. Because we don't know the backstage of what is happening. But one of the things that we can be certain of is the aspect of assistance, of guidance, of counsel that is never absent from our lives, which comes from the spirit plane. So to answer some of the questions that we just posed earlier about why do kids die at an early age or why people lose their fortune or why this or why that, St. Augustine answers us that question in the spirit book at its conclusion, in which he is going to say that there is a conclusion that spiritists or spiritists that are actually not spiritists, but they like the philosophy, they come to a certain conclusion. He says people arrive at three conclusions. Now, I'm not going to bring you the three. I'm going to invite you to read the conclusion in the Spirit's book, but I'm going to bring you the second, which has everything to do with our study. He says, from the three effects, the second one is the resignation in the face of life's afflictions. Spiritism enables us to see things from such a height that earthly life loses three-fourths of its importance, and we are no longer disturbed by its tribulation. Hence, we have more courage in our troubles and more moderation in our desires. We also have an aversion to the desire to shorten our life, for spiritist knowledge teaches that suicide always causes the loss of what it was intended to gain. So when we talk about the sufferings, I mean, this is very powerful, right? And when we look at this, when we, when we are able to rationally reach at this conclusion in studying spiritism, and we are able to take a step back, raise ourselves above matter, materialistic ideas, 
we are able to see things at a height above where the things that are beneath us, which does not lose its importance, by the way, we're not trying to diminish the pain that we feel. We have to acknowledge it. We have to look at it. We have sometimes to let ourselves feel it because it is often that, sh that very um, nasty type of syrup that we have to take in medicine for the illnesses, for the blemishes, for the issues, the infirmities of the soul that we still carry. I'm the worst for, for vitamins and medi medication, by the way. Just ask Marcelo. I'm like, if the pill is larger than this, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, you know? And in life, we can't say that. <laughs> we can't say that. We wished for the opportunity to heal, to heal. And so, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, Kardec is going to explain to her, suffering due to prior causes are frequently the natural consequences of wrongs that were committed in the past. That is, consequences met through the law of cause and effect, the law of justice, love, and charity. For example, and he brings this example, and I like to point out that there is no general rule in Spiritism. It varies. It varies because we are all different. It varies because we are all in different type of evolutionary um, degree of perfection. Although we all belong here, there is no one perfect in this room. Sorry, amor. I love <laughs> There is no one perfect here. And so Kardec is going to say, if they were hard and inhumane, they might return and be treated harshly and inhumanely. If they were pride, they might be proud, they might return to be in humiliating conditions. If they were selfish or made bad use of their wealth, they might be deprived of necessities. If they were bad children, they might suffer from their own children or parents. And so the relationships that we have brings us back to which it corresponds with what we need and those around us immediately need as well, corresponding to the great law of cause and effect. But to understand all of that, we need to study about the plurality of existences. This is not my first existence. It is definitely not going to be the last. It's going to be a while before I no longer need to be reincarnated. Like Jesus said, I overcame the world. He overcame the vices, the difficulties, the vicissitudes, all of it. Raised above through the process of perfecting oneself. Relative perfection, of course, because God is the total perfection. And so we need to study about the plurality of existences. Who was I? What did I do? It's only one life, many different types of existences. And how proud should we be that we have arrived at a moment of transition in which our planet is actually also evolving and so are the people in it. We need to study this and of course, we don't need, I mean we should, we can actually join David's Genesis classes on Sunday morning to understand how not only do people progress and evolve, so does the planet. And it comes to a point where some spirits will no longer be able to attend this school. They will be behind in their courses. They will need to redo it in another life, in another place. That is always in accordance with the degree of purification of the spirit. And so we elevate ourselves by the means of thoughts as to embrace a series of existences. And we actually do this in the same way that Adelaide did, trusting in God, in God's justice and supreme goodness. And understanding that no loving father would allow a child to suffer needlessly. And in reality, when we look at the aspect of suffering and we look at it as a lesson, we try to extract from it what it is that is trying to teach us in this existence. And then Kardec is going to say, one, however, must not think that every instance of suffering endured in this world is the indication of a specific wrong. Master, asks Peter, the blind man, who sinned, his father or him? He said, neither, 
he is here to show the work of the of uh, God's child. I forget the wording. But basically he's saying, the man that was blind is here so that I could utilize him to show the miracle of a healing. So it was a mission. And we see this happening a lot. We look at somebody like Chico Xavier, who by the way, discarnated 22 years ago, also today. And the life that he had, I mean, this man, there's no way that he belonged here. He did, but when I look at him, to me, the greatness of this guy is not aligned with whom I am. So some of the things that he endured, although he says that he did have to do with what he needed to, perhaps some of it was just to show us, to teach us. So he was utilized by the benevolent spirits to try to convey a message that often is hard for us to understand, should we not have a living example right beside us. Because we look at Jesus, and sometimes we don't feel so close to him. And we look at beings whom we consider to be that bridge. How many of you pray to your guardian angel? Good. Not many hands. And that's okay. Because sometimes we forget about that. We think <coughs> of Dr. Bezerra de Menezes. We think of Joanna de Angelis. We think of saints. My mother-in-law is the best. She's a woman of ardent faith. She has the altar, you know, with all the Marys. And when she prays to Mary, she feels that connection. So we have those people that have certain connections with this or that saint or this or that guardian angel, and that is okay. But spiritism is going to show us that we are not here to face the trials without the counsel, without the assistance of the benevolent spirits. Tribulations are simply trials chosen by a spirit to finish its purification and accelerate its advancement. Expiations always serve as a trial, but a trial is not always an expiation. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool, right? Which they bring us. And so Kardec is going to continue saying spirits cannot aspire to perfect happiness as long as they are still imperfect. They are like the passengers of a plague on a plague ship. They arrive at the place where they're supposed to be, but since there is that plague, they can't enter the town yet until they have been purified of that illness. Here we are. We are traveling. We are passengers on that ship. And there is a plague, and we are all affected by it. Maybe some of us are not, but we need to hold back before we enter the town as to not contaminate others. It's a cool example that they bring us, but it kind of plays an idea as to understand. He says, it is the medicine that cleanses the sores and heals the patient. The graver the illness, the stronger the medicine must be. But God is so good. I remember when my father was going through his cancer and I opened the book, I believe it was um, The Messengers, if I'm not mistaken, the spirit author, Andrew Lewis, the medium, uh, Chico Xavier, Chico Xavier, in which the spirit stated the following about people that endure long illnesses, like a cancer that takes a while, or ALS, whatever we are talking about. He says, a long illness is already the sign that the spirit is disengaging itself very slowly, so that upon the moment where that line is cut and the discarnation process is complete, it's not a shock to the spirit. Isn't that amazing? And we look at it that way. And meanwhile, the spirit is purifying itself, is perfecting itself, because that's what we are here to do. We are not perfect, but we are beings that can acquire that relative perfection. But they will state, it depends on the spirit throw through resignation to make suffering profitable and not waste the fruit by complaining. Okay, that's hard. So complain, 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 it's not going to help anything. That's the truth, right? We fall into that self-pity type of attitude for me. And so that's okay, do it. You know, and then you call somebody, call Fatima, cry to her. You know, find the consolation that perhaps she can give you as a friend. And that's what we're here for also, is to try to ease the suffering of our brothers and sisters. And we need to remember the reason why I asked how many of you pray to the 
spirit guide to your mentor to your guardian angel it's because Allan Kardec brought us the question 491 what is the mission of a protector spirit why do we have one and they answer their mission is that of a parent toward their children to guide their words along the path of the good to help them with their counsels to console them in their afflictions and to sustain their courage in the trials of earthly life and so sometimes this is another question you know, does prayer really facilitate the suffering that we endure the afflictions and they say it doesn't take away what you're going to go through but it eases up a little bit the load of pain that you find because it is at that moment that we allow the benevolent spirits to get near us and they do they do they do try to counsel us and at the moment of despair in which we are crying we feel so alone that nobody understands us and we open the gospel according to spiritism or the book happy life or whatever book that is enlightening by chance that message comes as a balsam to our souls it heals it makes us feel better and all of a sudden that pain that we feel that anguish that crying that is you know brings us out that feeling that we don't even have any more tear to cry it starts to ease up and it's as if somebody took a blanket put over us and we feel the embrace from the spirit people and that's the mission of the protector spirit and all of us have one all of us have one they were assigned to us before we incarnated we know them they know us and sometimes we feel so much shame about things that are happening that have <laughs> happened and they don't look at us as how we are they look at us as how we're going to be that's how they look at us and so I just wanted to to leave everybody um, with a final thought as far as affliction is concerned even if we forget to reach out to our protector spirit that we are able to pray all we need to do is think of this man and hold on tight <coughs> hold on tight these things I have spoken unto you that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Found on John chapter 16, verse 33. He is our pastor, our big brother, the one who came to walk the talk, show us how it's done. All that he endured, and at the end, he still said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Of course, pure spirit, our solar guide, if we want to say that. Some people say it, that's okay. This great sun that allows his rays to reach out to each one of us and embrace us and touch us. I see that child walking back there. <laughs> Please leave that her, it's okay. We don't know the type of spirit that is incarnated in that tiny body. She arrives, she might face some really hard tribulations, but she may also have a huge mission in this world. But for her to accomplish that, two parents came prepared. The two parents who know each other, who have endured their own afflictions, their own tribulations in the past, who may be facing it right now and I don't know. But then that tiny, baby arrives to ease up things a little bit yet they realize as spiritists with a rational faith that there shall be tribulations but Jesus is with us and that's the idea if I if I can leave you with anything to study today you may remember the topic blessed are the afflicted prior causes of affliction you go to the gospel according to spiritism and you read the entire chapter and do that do that especially at the moment when it hurts that much and even after that, so we get prepared for the tribulations that we may face yet again. On that note, I thank you for your attention, and I wish all of you a wonderful week. Wow, thank you, Andrea. Um, I was really touched by the whole lecture, but especially when you mentioned our 
mentor, our guardian angel. I mentioned him in the beginning of the prayer because we do get, we ask and we ask, and if we ask for the right things, of course we're always going to ask, but we're going to get what we need and not what we want. And I'm very musical, so I actually have a song for my mentor. <laughs> um, the Celine Dion song, Because You Loved Me. That's, that's my mentor's song, and I sing it and I feel him or her uh, with me. And, and I, I ask every Sunday, every Tuesday, let's go, please help me get there. And we make it here just about every Sunday and every Tuesday. So that's why I gave that piece of advice. Um, with this, uh, do we have any more announcements? No? Okay, we want to wish you all a happy Sunday, all of you at home. Um, you are welcome to stay with us through our work. We're going to have our passes now, our final, we'll have a preparing prayer for the passes and then our final prayer. Dear Jesus, wonderful mentors of conscience living, we're getting closer to the moment now where we're trying to donate our bodies and the best energies that we have in us for the passes. Please be with us, help us. We do know that we are nothing without Jesus and without your help. We have our will and our hearts to give for this moment. So please help us be with you and allow you to get closer to us while we try to bring in this new energy that will help our brothers and sisters throughout this week in their struggles to be able.